Hello and welcome to Mind, Body, and Spirit. My name is Dr. Julia Bain. Today we're going to talk about how to practice healthy mental health. And joining me is my dear friend and colleague, EAP counselor and counselor extraordinaire, Michelle Heyman. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming back. My pleasure. It's been a while. It has. Since we've had a conversation on television about how to work it. Yeah. Happy so, mental health, healthy mental health. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So thank you for coming. And, sure. and I thought we would just start off with kind of a broad question. Um, let's divine, define what we think healthy mental health means. Everyone has their own opinion on this. Everybody's different. Um, people have different preferences and perspectives and free will. Yep. But I, I just let's just start a conversation about what is healthy mental health. It's it's di like you said, it's different for everybody. And you have um, <clears throat> the one of the things I always think about is you know you have the op you have the optimist and you have the pessimist. And <sighs> but even the pessimist can have healthy mental health. Um, so you have to. It's very broad. Um, and when I I. I think back many, many years ago, I used to listen to Wayne Dyer all the time. He was oh. my ultimate, you know, kind of guru in, in healthy mental health. And <clears throat> he tells a story about how you view things. And I think part of healthy mental health is, is really like your perspective on how you view things. So the story that he tells is that he used to live, I think, in, in Phoenix. And so he would drive across Phoenix every day in the morning to work in this traffic nightmare. There's, you know, Phoenix has a lot of these two-lane cross towns. Uh -huh. and, and he he said, you know, you look around at the other people, the traffic is stopped. And people are in their car and they're mad and they're like this. And he said, why would you take that opportunity and look at it as, oh, as stressful and, and miserable and awful? Or, and not, or if not, you think about it in a different way, how you view it differently and think about it sort of as, what can I do with this time that I have while I'm in my car? So he would put on tapes, books on tape, uh -huh. learn different languages. Like he would utilize that same traffic jam uh -huh. that everybody else was stressing in, but view it as a time to do something good for himself. Uh -huh. so, so when I think of healthy mental health, I think about it's how you're viewing what you're doing. Okay. Make sense? Great story. <laughs> I love that story. It, it makes you look at things different. You're in the line at the grocery store. It's really long. Everyone's stressed. Everyone's in a hurry. Mm -hmm. They're looking around. And are you going to do it that way? Or are you going to turn around and talk to the guy behind you who's even farther in the line than you are mm -hmm. and maybe create a conversation and meet somebody new? Or, you know, it, it can be as pleasant or as miserable as you create it. It reminds me of that old expression, how can you take lemons and make them into lemonade? Absolutely. How, how can you take something that could be sour and make the decision, I'm going to make this sweet exactly. for me because um, I respect myself enough to want to create a life I want to live. And yeah, I'm so glad we're talking about this show because I think we need to have a conversation in our society about how important it is to take responsibility. Right. That's right. That's take, a huge, huge part of healthy mental health. Uh -huh. Taking responsibility for the life you're in, the, the whirling, swirling reactivity that we all get sometimes, mm -hmm. how to keep that to a minimum, and how to uh, remain cheerful, if not content. Yeah. So I love the answer to that yeah. question. Okay, number two. Okay. Let's just go ahead and be formal and go down the way. Okay, we'll go Want down you? the list. I'm okay. ready. <clears throat> um, the title of this program is Practicing, Practicing Healthy Mental Health. Can we discuss why the word practice mm. is the most important one? Well, you, there's that, that saying, practice makes perfect, you know? Um, and it's kind of like uh -huh. a muscle, you know, pra pra practice is like a muscle like you have to if you don't use it you lose it and it's so you have to constantly keep on it so that it keeps things strong for you like it keeps the muscles strong uh -huh. um i i read that there uh, if you have two pianists and you take them from the age of five equally talented pianists and that um by the age of 20 the moderately good pianist has practiced 
2,000 hours, 2,000 hours. He has at least 2,000 of pr hours of practice time till, his, till he's 20. The concert pianist has 10,000 hours. Uh, <laughs> ten, five times that, as many. Exactly. Because, and it's so they're equally talented. We're not born with it. We've got to work it. So we're equally, you know, we're born with the equal talent, but we ha the harder we work it and the more we practice, the better at it will become. Mm -hmm. Same thing with mental health. It's exactly the same. Healthy mental health. Mm -hmm. Practice, 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 you know. Stay on yourself. It's kind of uh -huh. like a self-check-in. Ah. Uh -huh. And knowing that um, it's up to you to keep your eyes on that prize. Right. We need to be able to really value um, our mental health so that we do practice and put the time in and and do things like forgive ourselves and, mm -hmm. and be focused on what am I doing? Am I just acting and behaving by habit because this is the pattern I've had for the last you know, 40, 50, 60 years of my life? Or am I recreating myself? Am I having a willingness to say, you know, today, today I'm going to be, today I'm going to be different. Well, however different looks for you. You can swing your feet out of the bed every single day and put them on the ground, right? <laughs> every day, out of the bed, on the ground. And before you put your feet on the ground, you make a decision right there. What kind of day am I going to have today? You know, and oh, so I like that. Swing them around before they touch. <laughs> it's going to be a good day. Swing them around before they touch. It's going to be an awful day. You know, either way, you're going to be right. You you pick it. You pick it. Uh, oh, you're so wise. I love that. It's not wise. <laughs> it is too it's, wise. It's sort of. I'll know, never swing my feet off my bed again the same way. I about hope. The heat I hope you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you change that. I hope you change it. I do. Uh -huh. It's a little, just a little, a little tiny thing you can do to sort of start to tweak. That's a practice. That's a practice. Maybe to, to flip the switch. It's, I'm on. I'm on. You know, and, and at night when you swing them back in, you can go to bed and think about everything horrible that happened today and everything horrible that's going to happen tomorrow and all <sighs> the worries and all the cares and all the stressors. Or you can swing your feet back in the bed and you can find three things that happened in your day that you're grateful for. Like a grat like gratitude. There's gratitude journals, but you don't even have to have a journal. You just have to lay there and think about three things that you're thankful for or positive things that happened in your day. And I know mm -hmm. you can find them. Even if it's your tuna fish sandwich you ate at lunch, uh -huh. you, you can find those things. You go to sleep and your brain has eight hours to process what you just went to bed with to think about, the, you know, to play the tape. So you can go to bed and play the tape of all the horrible things that happened and how horrible tomorrow's going to be. Mm -hmm. Or you can play the tape of gratitude and, and go to sleep and think about what's good. Yeah. And I also, one thing I like to do is um, I like to talk with my partner. What was the funniest thing that happened to okay. you today? Uh, it's a good way to kind of start the evening and not get into the habit of complaining about work or, you know, poor me or any of that kind of victimization that sometimes we can do. We can. But um, the, we have a tradition. We get home. Okay, what's your funniest story of the day? That's great. And it's a wonderful way to set the tone for a, a relaxing evening. And it, that's exactly what that going to bed with the gratitude is. It's exactly the same concept. It's you're setting the tone for where you want to be going for the rest of that sleep or that evening. Mm -hmm. And that's part of practicing. Yes. yes. It's part of a practice. Excellent. Perfect. Why is forgiving oneself so important when we repeat unhealthy habits and become immature and or reactive. Mm. Forgiving oneself. We are not perfect. That's why we're talking about practice. That's, you know, that's what we're talking. You don't, you, we're not perfect. So we're going to make mistakes. That's a given. It's like, let's just live with it. We're going to make <laughs> them. We make them. I can <laughs> probably tell you three I made already today. <laughs> so you're going to make them. But you're, you, again, you have that choice. Do you want to hang out mentally in the mistake, going over the mistake and over the mistake and beating yourself up and over the mistake? Or do you want to forgive that mistake so that you can become sort of unstuck 
and move forward, you know, move away from the mistake. You, you make it, you forgive yourself, you learn from it, and you go forward. Otherwise, you don't learn from it and you sort of just stay stuck. Mm -hmm. um, it's, and so it's, that's really important. But, the, but another piece of forgiving you is if you can't forgive yourself, you're, you can't forgive other people either. So then they, in your life, become stuck in their mistakes, you know, or their, you know, injustices to you. And, and so you, you are focusing, again, on things that have happened and, and not moving away to how you want to see them be different. Plus, like we do with other people, and we can do it to ourselves, without forgiveness, we have a tendency to punish. Absolutely. Punish, <clears throat> punish, punish, um, to become bitter, resentful. Oh, yeah. And... And it just, it kind of goes down from there. You know, there's no, there's no um, compassion for yourself or other people when you do not forgive. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and, and even though you think you're punishing them, the mental anguish is in you. They're not feeling it. They're not, they don't know that you're punishing them in your head. You're the one that's feeling that. So that's reinforcing that negative you know, internalizing that negative, and it keeps you stuck. Just as much as if you don't forgive yourself, it keeps you stuck if you don't forgive other people. Can you, can you describe or think of a way how somebody, when they catch themselves doing that, how to break that pattern in the moment? Um, it, right, that's a good thing, because if you can catch it when it's happening, then it doesn't get a chance to sort of keep rolling like a snowball. Uh -huh. um, you know, you can say things to yourself like, I, I choose to let this go. Okay. I choose to forgive. You know, forgiving somebody else is not really even about them. <laughs> <laughs> it's about you. Uh -huh. It's really for you. It doesn't mean that what they did wasn't bad and it didn't hurt, but it means that you choose not to live in that. So stopping it right there and saying, I, I choose to let this go. Mm -hmm. I'm letting this go. Consciously. I can't change it. It's mm -hmm. already happened. I have to let it go. Mm -hmm. I'm making, I think I'm making a good decision mm -hmm. by doing Feel that. better. You'll feel the decision. You'll literally feel the decision inside. Excellent. Yeah, I, we're all a work in progress. <laughs> I don't care if you live to be 150. We are never going to fully arrive and be these, you know, perfect emotionally, psychologically sound uh, entities, it's not going to happen. And and you said something to me the other day, which I would like to bring up now because I thought it was really, really good. Um, I thought it was very wise. Even even this can be good. Sure. Can I'm, you extrapolate on how we need to be open to um, failing and messing up and making mistakes and not being judged so judgmental around oh, that. How do, how do we value that as a way to become stronger and better people? Yeah. Could you talk about that? Well, when I said that even this can be good, it's taking a situation and again it goes right, it's all kind of tying together today because it goes back to how you're going to view this thing. Even this can be good. Even that traffic jam can be good. Even that line can be good. Even that huge mistake I made yesterday, while it's kind of hurting on the inside and my head's spinning around with it, even somewhere inside that, there's something that you can take out and turn into good. Whether it's I learned a lesson or I learned a language or I met a friend, you know, mm -hmm. depending on the situation, if you view it as what's in there that I can glean some information from or learn something from so I can move that with me as I as I go out of this kind of not happy place that's that even this can be good mm -hmm. it's like find it in there it's in there and, and even really serious life-changing events like when the person you adore says I want a divorce mm -hmm. It's, it's hard to find the, this can be good um, when you hear that, that news, but the, the good part of that is you really don't want to spend your life with someone who does not adore you. Yeah, correct. Um, Life-changing events like someone you adore is diagnosed with terminal <clears throat> cancer. Yeah, how do you find the good in that one? It, you, I've had people, and, and even in my own life, um, the good is having the most intense 
intimate, meaningful moments exactly. with that person that you may have never had because you have you have the strength and the bravery to, to say to them and you, this could be our last talk. This is what I really want to say. Right. There's there's something good. You or, or you dig down inside yourself, <clears throat> excuse me, where you don't want to go or you don't get to go very often. We don't like to think about that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes you have you that's where you find your bootstraps and you pull them up and you find the good is that you can find the strength that you have that you haven't been tapping into in order to help that person or be with that person or or get through that situation. You know, even that turns out to have some good. Um, to have you know, there's good there, and you can say when that's done, I I did pretty good. Uh -huh. You know, I did the best I could. I really dug in there, and I and I sat by that person's bedside, or I I I made it through that t terrible moment in life. I, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. I'm a lot stronger than I thought I was. And then we become strong. Absolutely. Because we realize that we're, we are resilient, we can make it. And we have those resources to, to pull on the next time. Because we've been practicing. Bingo. It's fact. It's now that self-talk. It's that self-talk. A lot of it is self-talk. A lot. Uh, you're so good. <laughs> How could viewers practice patience with themselves and others who are struggling to be strong, wise, and kind? <laughs> patience is a big, uh, big <laughs> virtue. Um, but you know, it, I, again, it sort of is tying together because it, if you don't have it, you can't see that in other people. That you can see where other people are struggling, but you have to have patience with them if they're not having patience, it's sort of a little, like a, like a little catch-22 almost. So you tapping into your patience is where you will find it for other people. It's like, it's compassion. Mm -hmm. It's having compassion, you know. Mm -hmm. um, when you're teaching a little person to do something new, um, we don't expect them to do it the way that we do it. We can't expect that. That's patience, but it's also having compassion for them. You're not going to force them. You just have to take your time and let them develop it in their own time. You know, we can't go to work and expect a coworker to have the same level of skills and the same, you know, the same everything that we have, the same mm -hmm. ethic, the same morals, the same values. So, but we can sometimes work with that person if we have a little bit of compassion for where they're at and where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. And remaining calm. <laughs> That's always better than not. <laughs> Not get, being reactive, remaining calm, and enduring someone, you know, because that is patience, calm, endurance. Enduring someone when perhaps they're being annoying, yeah. perhaps they're being immature, perhaps they're doing whatever they're doing. Um, you don't have to. You don't have to get hooked. You don't have to be like, I'm taking the yeah, bait. Yeah, let me get in there with them. <clears throat> yeah, right. You don't have to get in there with them. Right. You can practice that emotional detachment and say, and have compassion, and say, how can I give this person the gift of encouragement, or simply be fully present with them, and just listen. And sometimes you, you feel like you don't have it that day. You're not strong enough that day to do that, and uh -huh. so sometimes you step away. But it's, uh -huh. it's easier. Which is okay too. Absolutely, it's easier to step away and regroup and come back than it is to engage in, I want this from you. You know, that, that really puts a lot of pressure um, on you to try to change somebody else. You, yeah. you have to right. treat other people the, kind of the way that you'd like them to treat you. You're right. having that day, you'd like that same respect or that same compassion or that same patience. Because we're not changing anyone. Well, ugh. <laughs> I think one of the worst places to get stuck is trying to. Exactly. Big it's, stuck. it's a big enough challenge to change our habits and our patterns. Absolutely. And there's no way we're going to uh, be able to do that for anyone else. Oh, um, I just mentioned three important values that can help guide us to healthy mental health. Can we talk about those values and some other ones uh, too? Strong, wise, kind, and. Don't forget to talk about the slices of the pie. Oh, the pie. I <laughs> love the pie. So I, I think of healthy mental health. I think of, you know, it, what you put in your body and the exercise and the, the way that you take care of your body is healthy physical health, right? So uh -huh. if you're into healthy, you're going to 
do exercise, you're gonna do something active, you're gonna eat well, that's healthy. Same thing with your mental health. You have to put healthy things in and then use it in a healthy way. So I think about self-care, which is huge. I think I'd probably say that word 9,000 times a day. Um, balance and good, good habits. Um, and, and so one of the things I use in, in sessions is, is I have people sit down when they're feeling like they're off and something's not right or they can't, they're stuck and they can't get out. I have them sit down and I draw a picture, have them draw a picture of their life as a pie, like draw a big pie circle. Mm -hmm. And then to make slices of that pie, it's sort of, you know, by the size of them um, and write in, this is how much of my pie of my life is self-care. This is how much pie of my life is my partner. This is my spiritual slice. This is my hobbies. This is my work. This is my home. You know, and so in the pie, when the pie is done, generally you can see somewhere in that person's pie, there's a huge slice that's out of balance with all the rest of the slices. I've seen people draw a line down the middle and say, this is work and this is school or this is work and this is my kids. And I'm saying, whoa, where's the sliver? Even the little sliver that's, where's your self-care? Where, where's your hobbies? Where's your creativity? Where's your spiritual connectedness? There isn't even a slice in there. You know, so we get to look at that. What a good balance. exercise. It's great. You can do this at home. Yes, yes, you can. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a, and you can check in and do it again and again. Because the next piece of it is, is a, have them draw a pie of how they think they'd like it to look. Because this is part of what's happening, but where do we want to get, where do we want to go? And so the yeah, work what's slice. What's the prize? What's the prize? Key, that's right. What's the goal? Uh -huh. And so this gives you a little goal. And then you kind of work towards adding some of those slices in. Where's your self-care? You know, what do you do for yourself? Where's your, you got your kids and you got your work. Where's you? And, and no slice for you means you're no really slicey anywhere else. <laughs> it's not so good. Um, and you can always go back and revisit it and say, I'm off balance again, let me draw the pie. Does it look like the one I wanted it to look like? Uh -huh. So you can always go back a month later, a week later, a year later and redo that, that, pie, that balance, you know, that pie of balance. Because um, it takes practice to bake your new pie. <laughs> <laughs> Every day, you know, and, and I'm not saying that the pie is going to stay like that. It's going to shift, you know. Some days you're going to have a pie that has more in the spiritual or more yeah. in the self-care. And some days work is important and you have to add more. But, but it doesn't mean that there should be no slices for you. You've got to yeah. have some balance in there. Excellent. What a great exercise. I'm glad we talked about the pie. <laughs> Why is blaming other people for unhealthy mental health the biggest mistake one can make? Yeah, that's the blame game, huh? Yeah, the blame <clears throat> game. Why is that the biggest mistake that you can make? When you're in the blaming mode, it puts you um, in, in a victim mode. You did this to me. You caused me to feel this way. This is your fault. The finger is not... The finger's pointing out, 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 out. Uh -huh. um, so so it, being in that victim mode is a pretty unhealthy, mentally unhealthy place to be. It's a stuck place. Um, but what it does is it gives all the power to where the finger's going. So if the <laughs> finger's going out here, that means uh -huh. you've controlled my emotions, uh -huh. you've controlled my destiny, you've controlled my day, you've, you've done this, you've done that. So when the finger's pointing outward, it's not here i'm helpless oh absolutely but helpless is a miserable place to feel you know to be stuck in mm -hmm. um so the most important thing is yeah somebody can definitely do something to you um you know because we don't have control over what other people do but we do have control over what we and the finger turns around are going to do with that mm -hmm. so if you um have done something to offend me I have a choice now of what I'm going to do with it. Mm -hmm. and, but in order for me to move away from that, I've got to stop blaming and get out of that victim and take responsibility. It's a personal responsibility for my happiness, my time, my, uh -huh. my whatever it is that, you, that I think you've done. I have responsibility. Uh -huh. So I'm taking responsibility turns Excellent. that in Excellent. instead of out. I like this.
My yeah, you have all the power. There's the finger. <laughs> you have all the power. Well, okay, I have all the power. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, but, but you have all the power, and when you really fully believe that with your whole spirit, you feel really strong. It's very strong. It's and, very and this empowering. is a tough world, and um, life, is, life is a challenging place to be. Mm -hmm. And I think the goal is to be able to feel as strong as possible. And that being said, we are down to like, I don't know, three minutes. Can oh. you believe how fast? <laughs> we do this well. I know, we do this we well. We burn this 30 minutes really well. That's I know, great. we're going to have to do this uh, very in, in a lot sooner than, I think it's been a year since the last time you were on my it, show. But, yeah. Um, so when is it a good time to consider consulting with a counselor and what are your final words of wisdom? I think it's a good time, you know, it's the same good time, it's always the same. When you have gotten to this place where your pie is unbalanced, your perspective is, is finger pointing out, negative in, you lay down in your bed at night, you can't find the three good things that have happened today, you roll your feet over to the edge of the bed to get up in the morning, and you can't say this is going to be a good day, mm -hmm. it's probably a good time to check in with somebody who can kind of get you back on track and you know sometimes that's a friend but sometimes that's a counselor you know and that's what we're here for it doesn't have to be a life-shattering event to see a counselor sometimes it's just to get the balance back you know uh -huh. call it a little tune-up uh -huh. um, you know someone that can say hey let's make a pie <laughs> and let's make it sweet <laughs> let's make a better pie <laughs> uh -huh. let's not have, let's not um, have too much uh, sour and salt in it no nope. a little bit of sugar just a little you're incredible. Thank are those you. your final words of wisdom? I think so. You are so dear and so wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me back on here again. It's will always you, a pleasure. Will you come back and we could talk some more? Yeah. And encourage people to be happy and well? And healthy mental health? And healthy and, and practicing. Healthy. Practice, practice, practice. practice. That's right. Okay, so okay. you and I will practice until next time. Very good. And keep practicing. We are all a work in progress. Remember to always forgive yourself so that you can move on. Be strong and be brave. This is Dr. Julia Bain. Until next time, be happy and be well.